Hi, Clara of Clara Apple Eye Designs with another instructive video. This time, it's going to be for beginners because I'm usually doing workshops in the summer. So with the pandemic, I've had to do YouTube videos to do some instruction. So with this video, I'm showing beginners how to paint. And what we're going to do is we're trying to paint flat washes. graded wash where we wet the area in this case it's a disc and then we apply the paint add more water to the brush keep going 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 until we get to the lightest portion and then blended washes using silk salt for a little excitement and texture same thing we wet the discs thoroughly or the area that we're going to work apply the paint or the dye and sprinkle the salt and let the salt react basically the salt silk salt pulls the dye or the or the paint into itself and you get these textural qualities or the movement that remember i use water base gutta with Dynaflow paints, which are made to the consistency of dyes because they are so brilliant. We're gonna need our spritzer, Sumi brushes, water. And I have the paints that I'm going to use. Remember, I usually write down the colors I use. So I have a little tablet here for my, so I know what colors I'm using. This is the gutta. I'm not going to show you how to apply the gutta. I'm just going to reiterate. When you're applying the gutta once again, the tube and the stylus should be at this angle. Squeeze slightly and you try to get a slight rhythm going as you apply the gutta. And when you pull up, you pull this way to you and dab it in your paper towel. One more time. At this angle, squeeze slightly, the gutta comes out and you go, you move with some bit of a rhythm. The more you do the silk painting, the more of a rhythm you get and a little smoother with the flow of your line. You're not going to get straight lines because you're not, you can't touch the silk either when you're working. So some people, when they draw, they're touching the, you can't do that. You're over the silk and drawing at will. So you're always getting, pushing the, keeping this channel clear. And one more thing, in between applications, you put a steel pin in there to keep the nib or stylus clear. Then at the end of the day, or the when you finished the whole piece, you wash it out immediately. So now we're going to start on the silk. So now we have the prepared scarf and remember I'm doing the flat wash and I'll be doing the flat wash at the ends of the scarf creating a little border effect here and there then I'll be doing this graded wash in this end section there and there and in the center I'll be blending colors working with the silk soil to create a texture so I have my little scheme here the colors I'm going to be using brass magenta and claret it is in that container because this is what the colors the dynaflu colors come in now at the eight ounce level and this little mouth is just too little to work with so I pour it into these or try and save these bottles 
So now we're going to begin. Have the spritz water when we're ready to do this section. So we're going to apply the, I'm gonna sit for this. We're going to apply the first colors, excuse me. These have been shaken thoroughly. So this is your flat wash and your Sumi brush. You want to use your Sumi brushes because they hold more dye than the synthetic brushes. But as I said, we're doing a flat wash. In other words, we're trying to lay the color down flat. Now I'm going to turn the piece because we want some sense of continuity. Anytime you go over your hem, you stay a little longer because of course the hem is more, is rolled fabric. You are pushing the dye or the paint along. You don't want puddling, so any excess paint you try to pick up, hence the reason for your. Okay, next color. And you're pushing it. Now you can see the dye moves on its own into the spaces. You're always trying to keep the front line wet. Because you don't want a line to be created in the piece. Remember, you're pushing the paint or the dye along the fiber. Now we're going to turn again. Here we go again. If you look closely again, you see the movement of the dye in the fibers. You want to keep that front line. You'll hear me saying sometimes in the videos, you want to keep that front line wet. If it dries, you'll get a harsh line. Now, I don't know if you can see this. You may be able to see some bit of resistance. And I'll go back and show you. Right in that area. There, and you can see it a little bit there. That has nothing to do with the gutta that I applied yesterday. Sometimes these fabrics have little idiosyncrasies in them. There shouldn't be any wax, but sometimes in the with the fiber, as they do the um, making of the fiber, the scarf, you may find a little wax deposit. You just have to live with those little problems and hope that they'll come out in the end. Now, let me put my... All right. Now we're going to do the... <clears throat> graded wash, which is this little guy. I've chosen to use the brass color. Now, with this, we must apply water. Let me get another brush. We have to apply water to this area here. You have a choice of either spritzing or applying it with a bigger Sumi brush. I'm gonna apply it with a bigger Sumi brush, okay? We'll hold off on the spritz for the bigger area there. So we apply the water in the area that you want to work. 
Now remember, this is water-based gutta. So I have to work quickly. Otherwise, the lines are going to degrade. So I add the color at this end because I want the darker color to be at this end. And then I keep adding water to my brush and pushing it forward, the color forward. Adding more water to my brush because I want the end of the piece to be as light as possible. So if you have a short distance to go, of course you have to get as much of the water out because you want it to move from dark to light. And you use your little paper towel in your hand. So you do this section as quickly as possible and any residue you pick up with your brush like I'm doing here. So there's your blended wash. And you don't really have to get all of the residue because that will come off in the wash. So we're going to do the other end and you turn it. And once again, we apply the water with our large sumi brush. So everything must be at the ready. And you're working as quickly as you can. So you want this section to be dark. Now, add more water to your brush and push the paint forward. Now you'll see me going back and forth because I'm trying to get into those pointed peaks there. Uh, as well as keeping the point of my brush pointed. Okay, so, and that's that. All right, so we're moving from dark to light. Dark to light, an example of your graded wash. Now comes the exciting part, the center. And what are we gonna do in the center? I alone don't know either, but I thought I will do a little blast. So we're gonna start with the water again. I'm gonna spritz the area as quickly as possible. And the blast I'm talking about, like a little, from the center, I'm gonna work with the dark, the dark claret to magenta, and then the gold. Or maybe I should go the other way. I think I'll go the other way. Dark from the outside, the gold into the middle. So now we go with the, I think I'm going to go with my spritz. Here's your spritz. Because it's a large area. And as I said before, you got to work as quickly as possible. Okay, so. going as quickly as I can. Remember, we want this section to be dark. So, and the water is keeping the area wet because of course we want to have some reaction going on. Now I apply the next color. Try not to go as close as the first color as I possibly can in that circular movement motion and these little areas those little drips you tr try to get rid of if you can't don't worry the last color 
and now for the exciting part I am following the lines where the colors blend together with the silk salt all right if you want you can just put a couple in that area so you see what happens and there you go now as you wait even when I throw the salt down, it starts, the dye start, or the paint that I'm using, start to move towards the crystal. You can see it in this little area here. So there you have your flat wash at the border. At the borders there, your graded wash from dark to light. Graded from dark to light. And then a blended wash in the middle where I use all three colors. So I decided early on to have an edge, a slight border. So I painted, I drew, I'm sorry, I drew a guta, a line of guta down close to the hem of the scarf. So now I'm creating an edge. It finishes the whole project, the whole feel of the scarf. Sometimes I do it with an even darker color in the same family range of the magenta and the claret. But I've decided to be, keep it simple, three colors. We're using three colors. It is always a good thing if you do a little color theory study, do some study of color theory so that you have a good idea as to how best to choose and use your color. Now I'm going to turn to the other side carefully because the movement is still happening. And as you can see, so I'm moving in a lateral, turning it in a lateral manner so as not to upset this movement. And you can see already how the border finishes the look. Remember again, the importance of color theory. Most of the time, I found that you can't, there's not a lot of mixing of colors together. With these paints, I'm working straight out of the bottle, which is not what you're taught when you're working with oil paint gouache or acrylic or even watercolor you're always mixing the only time i mix is adding water for a lighter effect and i try not to mix more than three colors together otherwise you create mud i know for the artists in the room you're taught not to paint straight out of your tube but with silk painting sometimes that's the only way to do it so while this is drying and you leave it flat i am going to prepare for the next project using the same set of techniques and later on when it's completely dry I will show you how to do the direct painting or the superimposed painting onto a finished piece like this for effect I do wish to thank you 
for my 500 new subscribers and I ensure you that I will be continuing with my instructive videos so do like comment and subscribe and you can follow me on my Instagram at Clara Designs Art. Hope all this helps. Enjoy!